This episode was made possible by generous supporters on Patreon. Hey crazies, this piece of paper looks about as white as white can get. But what if I told you the color white doesn't exist? Do you really expect me to believe that? Not without an explanation, obviously. Okay, so the reason we can see anything at all is because of light. So let's start there. The word light applies to anything on the EM spectrum. These category names are adjectives. Radio light, infrared light, ultraviolet light. The universe is full of light. It's just that we can't see most of it. The only type of light we can see is this little tiny sliver right here, which we call visible light for obvious reasons. We see almost none of the light in the universe, but we do see enough to, you know, function on a daily basis. I mean, the vast majority of light emitted by the sun is visible, so it shouldn't be that surprising that animals evolved to see light in or near this range. Seeing an x-rays or radio just wouldn't be that useful. Anyway, specific colors are kind of like subcategories. If we zoom in on the visible part of the spectrum, we can see how the frequency or wavelength of light corresponds to color. Do you see any white in there? I don't. Check mate. White does not exist. Wait a minute. How the heck is your lab coat white then? Okay, I suppose I could elaborate. Sure, we assign colors to each of these wavelengths, but does that mean these wavelengths are those colors? There are plenty of colors we can see that don't correspond to a single wavelength of light. Black, white, and magenta are three big examples. So clearly there's more to color than just light. Hmm. Well, we know light is necessary. Without it, all we see is black. Black is the absence of light. So we definitely need a source of light, like the sun or a bulb or something. Then we need the thing we're trying to see, and, and then our eyeballs, and then our brains. This is getting overwhelming. Let, let, let's look at this as one big process. Lots of light is emitted by the sun. Some of that light will reflect off of this leaf. Even less of that light actually enters your eyes, which then sends signals to your brain, which in turn has to interpret those signals. Let's start with that reflection. Remember, the sun emits all the colors in the visible spectrum. The reason this leaf looks green is because that's the color the leaf reflects. Let me repeat that for everyone in the back. Objects do not have color. Light has color. Objects just absorb some colors and reflect others. I'm totally serious. My phone case isn't red. It just reflects red light. If you put it under different colored light, it'll be a different color. If something looks white, that just means it reflects all the colors. But that can also happen with things that are transparent. Take a nice piece of plastic, for example. You might be inclined to say it doesn't have color. It's clear. But if you fold it enough times, you'll notice something weird. It'll start to turn white. This happens because transparent materials aren't perfect. There's always a little reflection. If there's only one layer of plastic, the reflection is insignificant. But every fold adds extra reflections. Eventually, most of the light gets reflected instead of passing through. The same thing happens with polar bear fur. It's also transparent. It's just that the fur is layered enough with air to maximize reflections. You can turn the reflection back down a bit by filling the air spaces with something else, like water, which is exactly how the wet t-shirt effect works. The point is, objects don't have color. Light does. The next step in the process is how our eyes actually respond to that light. It's time for a crash course in human eye biology. The inside back of the eye is covered in cells called photoreceptor cells, which literally means light receiver. It's kind of nice when a scientific name actually makes sense. Those photoreceptor cells come in two types, rods and cones, which is literally a description of their shape. The rods only detect intensity of light, so they're not really useful for color vision. The cones are where the magic happens. At the top of each cone is a stack of membranes containing discs. tiny collections of a protein called This stimulates another protein called transducin. This the enzyme degrades enzyme a secondary messenger chemical called in the cone CGM. cytoplasm to the a decrease in CGMP, closes the thus hyperpolarizing We call this a what? 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 Okay, here's what actually matters. Light hits the cones, and a chemical process sends a signal to the brain. That signal contains information about color because there are three different types of cones, red, green, and blue. They're not actually that color. Most things in the human body are roughly the same pinkish brown color. These types of cones are called red, green, and blue cones because that's the type of light they each respond to. 
Wait, wait, our, our eyes can only see red, green, and blue? Yeah, pretty much. Then how does our brain know about the other colors? Mixed signals. This is one of those rare cases when mixed signals are a good thing. If you map out the sensitivity of the cone cells against the visible spectrum, you get something like this. Now let's say orange light enters your eye. That light will activate the red cones and the green cones by a very specific amount, which sends a unique mixed signal to the brain. No other color creates that signal combination. The same is true for every other color on the visible spectrum. But here's the thing. There are signal combinations the brain can receive that aren't created by a single wavelength of light. What if the blue and red cones activate intensely at the same time? None of the colors on the visible spectrum are gonna do that. But if your brain gets that signal, it's gotta make sense of it somehow. So it makes it look like this, magenta. Your brain literally made up a color for a hypothetical signal combination. And that's not the only color it made up. What if all three types of cones activate intensely at the same time? Well, that's what your brain calls white. So if you total up all the possible signal combinations that your brain can receive, you get about 10 million different colors. Colors we can summarize with cool animations like this. Actually, this reminds me of another point I should probably make. This isn't actually yellow. See, 10 million different colors is a lot to engineer into an LCD screen, like the one you're using to watch this video. So we've designed screens to play tricks on your brain. Your screen is made up of a bunch of pixels. If you make those pixels small enough, you get the illusion of a continuous image. But what if you want a color image? Your eyes can only see three types of colors, red, green, and blue. So that's all your screen has to display. Red and green set to full brightness is going to look yellow to your brain, even if it isn't yellow. If each color in a pixel has 256 different brightness levels, the screen has a total of 16,777,216 different colors it can display, which is well over the 10 million or so colors we can see. The point is, we already can't see a bunch of the colors that your screens are displaying. Any additional colors marketed to you are a complete waste of your money. So is white a real color? Not really. You won't find the color white on the visible spectrum like you would most other colors. It's not a color connected to a single wavelength of light. But if something reflects enough different colors at the same time, all three different types of cones will activate at the back of your eye and send a strong signal to your brain. Your brain interprets that signal as white. Your brain literally makes up colors and white is one of those colors. So are you ever gonna look at color the same way again? Please share in the comments. Thanks for liking and sharing this video. Don't forget to subscribe if you'd like to keep up with us. A special thanks goes out to Patreon patrons like William Morton, who helped make this show possible with their generous support. And until next time, remember, it's okay to be a little crazy. The featured comment comes from Monkey Business, who asked, why on earth is this not taught in school? Honestly, I think it's just old habits are hard to break. Also, changing official curriculum is, is not easy. You know, politics and stuff. Anyway, thanks for watching.